Now we have a short story in here, but a story that does relate to the events I just told you about. Now there were civilians here in the fort during the fighting. As unlikely as it does sound, most armies at the time did bring hangers on. These did generally include the families of soldiers that were here, though here at the fort, the U.S. Army did something rather unprecedented and began hiring the wives of many soldiers as professional cooks and nurses which meant that when the attack did come on the night of the 15th, because the bottom floors of both of these buildings were cookhouses, many of the women were here in the fort preparing meals for the men in the camps. This was the downfall of at least a few of them, according to some of our stories. As the British attacked this place, the buildings were locked up. This was both to protect civilians inside, as well as to allow these buildings to become uh, basically bunkers, strong points that they could use to repulse the British assault. The British, however, were very intent on capturing these buildings, and as this was the only entry point they had, they made numerous attempts to break in here and take the bottom floor of this building. And according to one account that we have, this was very successful. Now, right now, we do have it lit up. There's still sunlight outside, and yet it's still quite dark in here. But without that sunlight at 2 a.m. in the morning and without these candle lights, it would be absolutely pitch black in here. British soldiers charging through that doorway would have no idea what they were facing on the other side. And because they had bayonets fixed, any sound they heard was fair game. According to the laws of war, of course, if an enemy resisted during a siege of a fortification, the attackers had every right, once they got inside, to kill every living thing they found there. So the soldiers shouldn't have found any qualms with this. Unfortunately, they may have killed women and possibly even children attending them here. <coughs> because we do have many accounts from people who visited the fort in years past of a ghostly presence in here. The first is one that you can actually see a picture of once we go to our next stop next to the commissary. This is of a woman dressed in period gown here in the kitchen, caught in fact right in front of those barrels on a single photograph. We've also had people uh, say that they've uh, smelt sweet tobacco in here as from a pipe. And we've had children report seeing other children wandering around in here who didn't turn out to be there at all. But it's noted that only children have ever reported that. <laughs> now, as I said, there is a picture of the uh, wisp woman, as some people like to call her, at our next stop. And that's what we'll be heading now.